This is the aftermath of weeks of torrential rain in Niger's capital, and thousands have been left homeless. Water started seeping into our house, so we decided to move all the furniture. But when the big floods came, we decided it was better to rescue the older people and get them to safety in the mosque. But then, the mosque was flooded. Now we have nowhere to go. Some locals have sought shelter in schools. Aid organizations have moved in and are already providing emergency assistance. Our houses are destroyed. Our cattle have drowned. We are still alive, but we pray to God to save us from this disaster. Flooding is a recurrent problem in Niger. In May, the United Nations warned that more than 100,000 people in the country were at risk. Authorities are blaming construction and ongoing erosion for the current situation. There has been an uncontrolled construction, and we have already detained some people who are carrying out constructions on erosion sites. There are some private contractors who have not taken into account the impact of their actions. Last year, flooding affected tens of thousands of people in Niger and left dozens dead, mainly in the desert regions of Agadez and Tahua. Authorities are urging residents to evacuate low-lying areas. Leslie Morungu, CGTN. Well, let's now discuss this issue further, and we are joined in studio here by Farid Aywar. He's the regional head of Disaster Management International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Society. So, Farid, thank you for joining us here on the link. We've seen their natural disasters across mm -hmm. the globe, but also particularly here in Africa, in Niger, in Sierra Leone there. What's your take on how countries in Africa are responding to these disasters? I think, uh, as you say, the number of countries have reported landslides and uh, death reported, like in Sierra Leone, over a thousand. Most of the national societies in these regions have responded to the current crisis, of course, with the little they have. Uh, however, some of them, uh, the magnitude is bigger than they can handle, meaning that they have to look at their current capacities, improve and strengthen their system to respond to this one. So we are talking about management is, is, is bigger than they can handle. Sierra mm. Leone, for mm. instance, is still recovering from mm. the Ebola crisis of a few years ago. Mm. So how exactly are they going to strengthen their management systems to avoid catastrophes? I know the, national, the country is establishing a disaster management authority. We are taking the national society volunteers through training uh, and in terms of search and rescue. But most important, we're looking at disaster risk reduction to minimize, reduce, or eliminate risk of such uh, landslides in the future. So it's mainly investing in uh, re reducing uh, risk is through resilience program, building capacity of the national, the people to, to, to uh, withstand such time, but also minimizing and eliminating the risks of the landslide itself. So today it may be Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. uh, Niger, the DRC, tomorrow mm -hmm. it may be other countries because mm -hmm. uh, flooding takes place in many countries. Mm -hmm in several years, over yeah. several years. Though. So mm -hmm. what more do you think African countries should do, though, to mm -hmm. ensure that they are prepared for these uh, situations? Investing in inf infrastructure. I mean, most of these flood waters that are causing destruction and death is the same water that is needed during drought spell. So it's managing our resources well. Um, uh, we also need to look at how we can build and invest in infrastructure in areas like uh, rural areas where most of the slides is happening because through uh, proper management of, uh, of, of the land, uh, they, they, this could be reduced or eliminated, as I say. So uh, funding is drying up, obviously. I know your society perhaps offers the humanitarian assistance there, but fr funding is drying up across the board when it comes to humanitarian assistance in Africa. So what are the alternatives here for African countries? African solutions to African problems. Uh, the days where we sit and rely on resources from outside should be gone. It's time to African national society to manage their little resources well, ensure that the system structures are meant towards addressing their problems. No solution will come from outside. It has to be Africa's solution for Africa problems. All right, Farid Aywa, thank you very much for joining us here on the link.